Hello, my name is Samantha, and welcome back to another Embedded Systems Workshop. These workshops are led by our mentor, Stefan Prestrowski, a student at the UC Berkeley College of Engineering, as well as our 2021 president, Sarah Lowe. Today, you'll be learning about analog inputs and outputs and what distinguishes them from digital ones. We've got three great mini projects set up for you guys. Without further ado, let's get started. So today, we will be covering analog inputs and outputs. If you're familiar with it, this is similar to in the same realm. Well, this is in the same realm as digital inputs and outputs, but I'm about a whole different beast this time. So first off, I'm going to be introducing digital and analog inputs and what distinguishes them from digital ones. And we'll have three different exercises that cover that cover some analog inputs, outputs, and then one covering both. So we'll be making three things in our exercises. The first one is a random color, random is RGB LED, which changes is to a random color every second. Second is a potentiometer that you can use to light up a row of LEDs. And the last one is mood lighting using a potentiometer. Here's all the parts you're gonna need. I mean, of course, the, the basics. Or do we know a USB cable and the breadboard? We're also going to need the 10,000 ohm potentiometer. You need one of your RGB LEDs. Doesn't matter which one you pick and which one you use, just pick one of the two you have. Five color LEDs of your choice, preferably all the same color. Five 330 ohm resistors, three 220 ohm resistors and a busload of male-to-male jumper wires. And by the way, uh, the resistor strips, the like, strips of resistors that look like a ladder, it will tell you uh, what um, value those are, just to make things a little bit easier. All right, first let's start with a little bit of You guys all know the breadboards, how those are linked really together, the holes going horizontally, on, in the center of the breadboard, holes are linked horizontally, but not across the middle divider. Now on the edges, they are linked vertically, but again, do not cross the middle divider. Once again, we have resistors. And you're gonna slow the electrical current. This will be important so we don't blow out the our LEDs, especially not the RGB one. We just slow the, how fast the current flows. Resistance value is measured in ohms, and that's represented by the uh, the stripe on the bottom of the resistor. And each stripe has a different value depending on the color and location as shown in our chart here. So just to recap, we're going to need three 220 ohm resistors and five 330 ohm resistors. All right, so an analog signal is one that can be adjusted to a range of values versus a digital signal, which is simply on or off, on or off. And a, a helpful analogy here is to think of a digital signal as either a switch or button, where you have a switch, you flip the switch, that turns it on, or if you have a button, you press it, that turns it on until you release it, or to so turn the switch off. Analog signal could be a dial or a knob. If you ever use the, um, if you ever use like lights where you have adjustable brightness or the temperature controls in your, in, in say, with the temperature and volume controls in your car, those are all analog. Those are all analog. So, a few examples of digital versus analog. Some analog examples of analog are potentiometers, so we can say vary the brightness of a bulb. Analog pressure sensor, which records a varying weight. The scale. If you have a digital scale. Technically, that's actually it takes an analog signal and interprets it. It just outputs it as a it just outputs it as a digital signal. It converts the it essentially just converts the analog signal to a digital value. And then a joystick, which sends two analog signals for x and y axis. If you ever played video games on like a control on a game controller, you have two joysticks and each one of them had is essentially two analog and two analog signals. Versus digital, the switch to turn the button just Turn the bulb on or off rather than vary its brightness. A pressure sensor, like a digital pressure sensor, simply senses if 
the force applied is the weight is above a certain value, and of course our good old button, which sends a signal whether the button is pressed or not. A few more <clears throat> buttons, LEDs, and light bulbs. Although these can actually get, uh, these can actually receive analog signals. Proximity to detect if an object is a certain range. A level, like a liquid switch, which is hex, if it's above a certain level. And circuit breakers are also digital. More analog, which is the potentiometer. Motors are all technically analog. Ultrasonic sensor or distance sensor sends an analog signal. Temperature and humidity module is also analog. We've all, as mentioned joysticks, photoresistors, and the third resistor can also send analog signals. So now we go to the RGB LED. Two of our three exercises will involve using this guy. It's actually not an RGB LED so much as it is three LEDs under a common housing. And what that allows us to do is vary the intensity of each of the three lights to produce a certain color. And you can produce over 16 million different color combinations, which which you're probably not going to be using 99% of them, but just the fact that you have that many, just the fact that you have that many is, is, is good. The longest of the four pins connects to the ground. And then we have three more pins. So let's say we have the, the long pin, that's our cathode, is the second one from the left. The first one from the left corresponds to red. Third from the left corresponds to green, and the fourth from the rightmost corresponds to blue. So I got to mention something about potentiometers, and yes, I sort of did lie to you earlier about when I said the potentiometer was a variable resistor. It's actually not a variable resistor per se. Instead, what it is is two, essentially two resistors, two variable resistors placed in series with each other. You have a wire connected between the two, which connects to an input. <clears throat> Turning the dial varies the ratio between those two resistors, which will give us a different voltage at point W, which is the middle pin here, point W on this diagram. And then the voltage at point W can then be used as an analog signal. <clears throat> so if you remember <clears throat> a voltage, if you know how voltages work, so let's say you have the dial set all the way to point A. That means the dial, that means your output voltage at W is gonna be, let's say we have five volts going into A and then B goes into ground. If you have the dial set all the way to A, the, the voltage at point W is gonna be five volts. If you have the dial halfway between the two, the voltage at W is gonna be two and a half volts and you have the dial all the way to B, the voltage at W is gonna be zero volts. So this is what we can use to generate an analog signal that we can then interpret, that can then be interpreted by say our Arduino. Another one, another thing we need to gotta cover is analog to digital conversion. Essentially when analog signal, the, it, it, when analog to digital converter does, it converts the analog signal into a kind of digital signal which usually happens through Boolean style function. For example, if voltage, if the analog signal is greater than a certain amount, I'll put a digital signal of on, for instance. And this can, and this can also be useful for something to be, for something to, to convert our analog signal to a more usable value for a computer to use. All right, first exercise involves a lot of random color RGB. A random color LED. So <clears throat> the way this is set up is the middle pin, the, our middle pin, or say our, gra our ground pin is actually the third pin here. And <clears throat> this is actually a little bit messed up, I'm just realizing now. Um, so the rightmost on here is the red. The second one is the and the leftmost is actually blue, and then the second from the left is actually, is going to be green. So this needs to be this needs to be fixed. It depends on how you insert the RGB LED. It 
does that the way, it, the way it's inserted here is all right but just make sure the longest pin here i'll show you actually on here let me just switch over to my dock cam get that guy powered up Uh, switch camera. All right, so if we look here, all right. So how this works here is the third pin, which is going to be the. So let's say we have this thing arranged, and arranged with. Let's say our first pin is left, though this is mirrored. So the third pin, the longest pin, should be your your third pin from the left. The longest pin here should be the third pin from the left of here, just to make sure that's clear. And just a quick note, while we do have a potentiometer in the schematic, it's not going to be used just yet. That's going to be used in a couple of later exercises. It's just here, so you guys can put it in. And if, one thing I should mention, the Arduino has six um, analog input pins, and that's what our potentiometer is going to be connected to. So how the pinch or in this case is set up is you have three pins, two on one side, one on the other side. One of the so the that middle pin, which is on, which is by itself on the one side, that goes to our analog input pin, which in this case is A1. And then the other two pins connect, one connects to five volts and the other connects to ground. It doesn't matter which one you connect it to, all that changes is the direction you need to turn it. All that you change is the direction you need to turn it to go from zero, from zero to full. Everybody got this down? All right, just leave a, just leave a message if um, there's something that's confusing or there's something, there's something you, want me to, you guys want me to explain. Um, maybe maybe I'm gonna have to see if people, um, I guess I can finish up Yeah, yeah. Give you guys Okay, it's been a couple minutes, so we shall move on. So I'm just going to grab the code from GitHub. In this case, it will be lesson seven. I'm sure most of you guys will do this. You guys will know how to do this, so I'll just go this pretty briefly. Go to your repository, click compare, switch the repository so that your base, here's the base, and the FTC 937 is the head. Great pull request and merge those pull requests. You should have lesson seven in your repository. And just a quick review on how to set up that Arduino. 
either find an open Arduino on your desktop or go to the browser version if you somehow don't have it downloaded. Then click File, save a tab as random RGB. Connect the USB port here in your kit to Arduino into a USB port. Then open the tools window to make sure the board is better recognized as Arduino Genuino Uno and the port should become something. Mine seems to default to COM3. Here's the code, just a pretty simple code to make that RGB randomly change colors. So up here we have set check code initialize the pins for the RGB LED with nine corresponding to red, 10 corresponding to green, and 11 corresponding to blue. And we initialize those outputs through a simple uh, for loop. So what we do here in this for loop is set each of the three to Aaron, is that each of the three to a random color and then write those values and then wait a second. So set each of the three, each of the three LEDs in there to be LED to a different value between zero and 255. 255 being the maximum because this is an eight bit, yeah, eight bit. So set a random value between zero and 255. All right, I'm just gonna leave this here for a little bit. You guys can uh, just go over this. You guys have any issues like building the circuit or figuring out how something, if you guys have issues figuring out the circuit, just feel free to add, and just feel free to let me know. I'm here for that. If you guys have any questions about how to build the circuit, about building a circuit or setting things up, just feel free to let me know. Or if you're done, you got it working, just put, just type done in the chat. Um, how are you guys doing here? Um, what, what part are you on? So I realized realize that, that um, holding could have to take a bit of time. time. Um, um, or if or you have, have problems, problems with connecting your circuit, circuit, just, just let, just let us know. know.
All right, cool. Now let's go on to our second exercise, which is our row of LEDs. And I've des I designed this workshop, so you do not need to disconnect the RGB LED <clears throat> for this. What you just gotta do is insert these, the five LEDs of your color. Which are pins two, three, four, and five. <clears throat> Connect the uh, 330 ohm resistor. Oh, I forgot to mention the the 220 ohm resistors. Those go between. Those go to the um, the RGB LED, and the 330s go to our regular LEDs. And as a, and like I said, I designed this workshop so you can insert the five LEDs here. Without having to disconnect the RGB LED because they all because they're using different pins. I'm gonna move the schematic up for a little bit just so you guys can uh, so you guys can get to get done with that. All right, now that, that should get, give you guys enough time to set this up. So here we go. The LED row code, which is simply titled row of LEDs. So we have a code here that initializes the five LED pins. This one sets these two pin mode functions here. So our A1 pin, which is what's connected to the potentiometer. And it sets that to an input then the five LED pins, so those to output. And then this for loop and if statement checks if the value of the, on the potentiometer pin, and then checks the value of the potentiometer pin, and if it's greater than a certain value, it'll turn on a specific LED. So once you, so when it goes to its maximum, all five LEDs will be lit up. And I can demonstrate that real quick. Get my dock cam. Just uh, change camera real quick. Change camera. All right. Just to uh, show you guys here, let me upload this. Let me upload the code here. It's still set to my. Uh, right. It's still set to the uh, random one. Upload you. All right. So so here we have the potentiometer. Return that. So it's to light up the LEDs, which are at the bottom here. As I turn the potentiometer, it'll light up between one and those five. So essentially what this is actually is, that, essentially what this is actually, some weird stuff is happening here. Essentially what this is, is an analog to digital converter. You know, look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Weird stuff is happening with my potentiometer. You can see oh, weird stuff is happening with my potentiometer again. It would be helpful if I just do that. All right. 
soon you guys are done, just uh, let me know. We're just having to move to John again. You can see that lights up. Just let me know when you're done with this. If there's any questions you guys have, either conceptual or actually building the thing. Once you're done and you got it working, just type down in the chat. This unforgettable vacation memory. It didn't actually begin here. This memory. Dark camera, is that not needed at the moment? Just let me know when you think now is a good Sam, do you think now is a good time to move on or no? 
Um, have you guys, guys finished the book of this and, and um, um, seen the cookbook works? I think it's almost not so much out there. Yeah, great. yeah I'd, I'd like to actually get to do a little bit of just. Just let me know where you guys are, or I want you to, okay, one done. We can wait another minute or two. Um, if you have questions about the code or um, how I like this word, it's not a good time to ask. Alright, two out of three done. Final exercise, let me actually make sure I uh, upload my code to the you know. All right, next up we have a bit of mood lighting. So what this, the idea behind this is, it's basically the same schematic. In fact, if you, if you build the schematic from uh, exercise one, you shouldn't have to add anything. So the, yeah, actually, you shouldn't have to add anything. It's just this is the schematic for this. So basically what the idea behind mood, this mood light is, and I'll show you um, on after the dot cam. Let me set this little guy up. There we go. Let me just uh, show you guys what this mood lighting is all about. We have the lighting here is not great, actually. Hold on, let me close a couple of curtains just to make sure I get a bit of lighting here. Just give me a second. <laughs> okay, that might actually be a little bit too dark, but that's actually perfect for me to demonstrate. So, the idea behind this little mood light here. Yes, if I turn the knob, it changes from yellow, or this is what I presume to be yellow, to white, then to blue. Assuming weird stuff doesn't happen to my potentiometer. Assuming weird stuff doesn't happen to my potentiometer. There we go. You can see the mood light here, it'll turn from yellow to white to blue. That's the idea behind this, but that's the idea behind this. Let me switch back here before we continue. Let me switch back to the camera here. Let me put this guy away. All right. So we have this code is a bit bigger here. So I have a, a few variables set up. Obviously, there are to be LED pins. Then I have three. And then I have three variables to for the colors, and then one for just a variable I titled volts, which is going to run this algorithm here. Set the potentiometer input. Set the RGB LED to output. And I just have a serial monitor here just for I put a serial monitor in there for debugging, and I kind of forgot to remove it, so that's not going to be important. So then our loop here, we have if the voltage is below half. So what I, so how this thing works is the input, the input pin the anal, uh, for the, um, the input pin for analog can read up to, and can read from, this stuff is happening to my, this stuff is happening to my LED, what is this? Okay. So how this works is that, the analog input pin can read from 
0 to 1023. It's a 10-bit um, input. So what it does is just cut that in half. And if it's less than 255, it'll follow this algorithm. So when it's 0, it's just going to be it's just, when it's zero, it's just going to be red at full, green at full, and blue at zero, which is going to generate a yellow color. And then once we go above 255, there's going to be blue at full, and then the red are going to decrease. And the red is going to decrease. So this is when you get above half. So when you get below, when you get above halfway, it's going to instead of increasing the blue. Okay, what am I doing? So below halfway, as you turn the potentiometer, it will increase the intensity of the blue. When you get above halfway, the intensity of the blue is going to be at full, and then the intensity of the red and green is going to decrease, and that'll change from a white to a blue color. So this first, the first section codes essentially the transition from yellow to white, and then the second one codes the transition from white to blue. Then the last segments of code are just to <clears throat> write the values to the three into the three LEDs inside the RGB. And just have that serial again, just as just what I use for debugging. It's not important for this. So let me know if you guys have any questions about that. If you want, feel free to turn to the camera and show us um, the early lighting code is working, or if you want to show the previous resources that can come to you. Yeah, just show us how you do. Just show us how you do it. Show us. Just show us um, what you've got. And if it's working or if it's not working, it needs some help. Let me go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Um, so you guys remember we worked with um, motors on one previous exercise. We can use a potentiometer. We worked with motors in PWM last time. What you could do with this potentiometer is you can use the potentiometer to potentially control the speed of the motor if you want to. Or you can use it to make a servo, or you can use it to control the position of the servo. There's a lot you can do with an analog input, actually. Because it's not limited to just on or it's because not just not just limited to on or off. If any of you guys would like to show uh, show your camera and show the mood lighting working in action, uh, that'd be that'd be appreciated actually. It's just a thin touch. Mine is slightly different because it's a bit of a for example. Um, and then. Colors. If you want to code code this, this one, one um, you can ask as well. well. But, but we'd, we'd love, love to see, see if you um, can do it later later later. Later.
if you guys um, all right so if you guys would like to show anything that would be the time to do it um, or if you guys would like to say you're done and you got, if you guys just don't want to show it, you can just say you're done in the chat I kind of need some kind of response from you guys. Just some, just so I know I'm actually okay. That works. <laughs> hey, Ronit, really, if you'd like to show me your, uh, if you'd like to show me what the, um, if you'd like to show me the uh, mood lighting that you, whether or not you managed to get, if you managed to get that working. Makes me pretty neat. Is the last exercise for today. You guys have any you guys have any questions about anything conceptual? Now's the time to, the time to ask those questions. Or um, feel free to type in chat or um, ask aloud. Um, next week we are doing a um, six box project. Um, and I think that'll be the last of the theory, so there will be a couple, couple things. things. But after, after that, that, we're going, going to assign um, a final, final individual project, project. and we'll get into more, more details, details about that soon. soon. But, but today, today is the last really good theory workshop. workshop. Yeah. Yeah, and now, now hopefully you guys should have all the, uh, all the all the knowledge information you need to all the knowledge and information you need to start with the actual like final project. Which will be fun. I think, I you, think guys you guys will enjoy the project, project this week. week. And then um, the final, final project will be something that is achieved. Um, as, as always, always, if you have any questions, questions feel, feel free to ask, ask if you can shoot us an email or ask us in Discord. Discord. Otherwise, Otherwise, thank you guys for coming, coming, and I'll see you next week. week. Alright, have a good one. See you guys.